Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk to you about density and buoyancy. Our objectives are going to be to calculate the density of an object, to determine whether an object will float given its average density, and finally to calculate the forces on a submerged or partially submerged object using Archimedes' principle. So let's start by talking about fluids. Fluid is matter that flows under pressure, things like salts, things like liquids or gases or plasmas water, air, or an arc welder. Fluid mechanics, then, is going to be the study of fluids and how they interact with forces. Now, density of a fluid, well, density of anything, is the ratio of the object's mass to the volume it occupies. Less dense fluids float on top of more dense fluids, and less dense solids will float on top of more dense fluids. So density, given the symbol rho, is mass divided by volume. It's volume, mass, density. Let's find the density of water. One kilogram of water fills a cube of length 0.1 meter. What is the water's density? Well, we can find that out. Rho equals mass divided by volume. In this case, our mass is one kilogram, and our volume, well, if it's a cube of length 0.1 meter, that's going to be 0 0.1 meter cubed, or 1 over 1 1,000th will be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The density of fresh water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. How about volume of gold? If gold has a density of 19,320 kilograms per meter cubed, what volume does a single kilogram of gold occupy? Well, to find that out, we're going to use the same equation. Density is mass over volume. Therefore, volume must be mass divided by density. Our mass is 1 kilogram. Our density is 19,320 kilograms per meter cubed. When I put that into my calculator, I come up with something right around 5.18 times 10 to the minus 5 cubic meters. All right, let's talk about things that float. If fresh water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, which of the following materials will float on water? First off, we have ice with a density of 917 kilograms per meter cubed. Well, that's less dense than water, so it should float on water. And you've seen that happen. Put ice into a cup of water and it floats. Magnesium, it's more dense than water. It's going to sink. Cork, it's less dense than water. Of course, cork's going to float. And glycerol, 1260 kilograms per meter cube. That's more dense than water, so it's not going to float. So that leads us to buoyancy. Buoyancy is a force that's exerted by a fluid on an object that opposes the object's weight. The buoyant force, or FB, typically written F with the subscript B, is a vector and it can be determined using Archimedes' principle. The buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid displaced times G, the acceleration due to gravity. So let's look at a sample problem using the buoyant force. What is the buoyant force on a 0.3 cubic meter box fully submerged in fresh water? It has a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, you recall. Well, the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid displaced times the acceleration due to gravity, which in this case is going to be Density of our fluid, fresh water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Our volume displaced, if it's fully submerged, must be 0 0.3 meters cubed. And g, our acceleration due to gravity, let's use 10 meters per second squared as an approximation to 9.8. That gives us 1,000 times 0.3, 300 times 10, 3,000. And it's a force, newtons. Three thousand newtons. Let's take a look at the shark tank problem. 
A steel cable holds a 120 kilogram shark tank three meters below the surface of salt water that has a density of 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter. If the volume of the water displaced by the shark tank is 0.1 cubic meter, what's the tension in the cable? Well, let's start with the free body diagram. Figure out all the forces on our tank. We've got the weight, mg. We have the buoyant force, fb and we have the tension in the cable, T. Now, if it's just being held there, then the net force, no acceleration, must be zero. So we could write that the net force in the y direction, which is equal to the tension plus the buoyant force minus the weight, must equal zero. And if we're trying to find the tension, we could rearrange to find that tension must equal the weight minus the buoyant force. But if you recall, the buoyant force is rho Vg, so that's equal to mg minus the density of our fluid, volume displaced, times g. Which implies then that the tension must be equal to, well, our mass, 120 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, we'll round off to about 10, minus the density of the fluid displaced, 1,025 kilograms per meter cubed for salt water, times its volume displaced, 0.1 cubic meter, times g, 10. Or 1,200 minus 1025 is just going to be right around 175 newtons. That must be the tension in the cable. Take the sample problem of a concrete boat. A rectangular boat made out of concrete with a mass of 3,000 kilograms floats on a freshwater lake. Fresh water, density is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. If the bottom area of the boat is six square meters, how much of the boat is submerged? Well, again, let's start with the free body diagram. There's our boat. We have its weight, mg, and the buoyant force, fb. And if it's floating, the net force in the y direction must be zero. So net force in the y direction, which is the buoyant force minus mg, must equal zero. Therefore, it's pretty easy to say that the buoyant force must be equal to the weight. They must balance out. Well, how do we get the buoyant force? Archimedes' principle says the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume displaced times g. So density of our fluid, volume displaced times g must equal mg. Right away we can make a simplification, divide g out of both sides. And you can also notice here that the volume displaced is just going to be the area of the bottom of the boat times the depth of the boat, d. So I could rewrite this as density of our fluid times A times D must equal M. Or D, the depth of our boat, must equal M over density of our fluid times A. Plug in our number, substitute in 3,000 kilograms over the density of fresh water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times the area of the bottom of the boat, 6, and I come up with 0.5 meters as the depth of the boat, which must be submerged. Let's take another look at a problem, this time talking about apparent mass. A cubic meter of bricks has an apparent mass of 2,400 kilograms when it's submerged in salt water. What's the mass on dry land? All right, well, if you think about it, let's start with our free body diagram. While it's in the water, we have the buoyant force and if it has an apparent mass of 2,400 kilograms, that means we must be putting it on a scale of some sort. And it's the normal force that a scale reads. So the scale must be reading as if it as in, had a uh, mass of 2,400 kilograms, as if the normal force was causing a apparent weight of 24,000 newtons. So we've got the normal force pushing up, and we have mg, its weight, down. 
And if it's in equilibrium, we could say that the normal force plus the buoyant force must be equal to the weight, because the net force in the y direction must be zero. Now, as we do this, we know the apparent mass is 2,400 kilograms. So apparent mass is 2,400 kilograms. And we know that the normal force then must be 24,000 newtons for the scale to read that. Mg, 2,400 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So 24,000 plus the buoyant force, density of our fluid times the volume displaced times g minus its actual weight, mg, equals zero. Therefore, we can start substituting in our values. 24,000 plus density of salt water, 1025 kilograms per meter cubed, times the volume displaced, well, that's one cubic meter, times g, 10, minus mg, well, that's what we're trying to find, so that's minus g, 10, times m, must equal zero. Therefore, just a little bit of algebra to solve for m, 24,000 plus 10,250 must equal 10m. And if we divide both sides by 10, I find that m is 2,400 plus 1025, or 3,425 kilograms. That's the actual mass. Now when it's on a scale, when it's submerged, it only reads 2,400 kilograms because the buoyant force is lifting part of that up, taking part of that weight. Let's take a look at a submerged cube. A cube of volume 0 0.002 cubic meters is submerged in a glass of fresh water and attached to the bottom of the glass by a massless, spring, massless string. So we've got a glass here. And inside here, we have a cube. And it's attached to the bottom of all of this by a string. Something like that. If the force of gravity on the cube is 10 newtons, what's the tension in the string? Well, again, let's start with the free body diagram. There's our object. We have the buoyant force up. We have the weight down. And we have the tension pulling down. And because it's just sitting there, it must be in equilibrium. Net force in the y direction must be 0. So let's start off by writing that the net force in the y direction equals 0 or the buoyant force minus mg minus the tension must equal zero. Well, if we want to find the tension in the string, then the tension must equal buoyant force minus mg. All right, tension then, buoyant force, density of our fluid, volume displaced, times g minus mg or we substitute in our values, tension must equal density in fresh water, 1,000, times the volume, 0 0.002 cubic meters, times g, 10, minus mg, and in this case, mg is 10 newtons, the weight. Therefore, 1,000 times 0 0.002 times 10 minus 10 gives us a tension of 10 newtons. Great, and if all that's the case, well, what's mg? We could go figure that back out now. If mg equals 10 newtons, then the mass must be kilogram. All right, example nine, determining density. The density of an unknown specimen may be determined by hanging the specimen from a scale in air and in water and then comparing the two measurements. If the scale reading in air is F sub A and the scale reading in water is F sub W, develop a formula for the density of the specimen just in terms of the force in air, the scale reading in water, FW, and the density of the fluid. Well, when it's in air, we have Mg and we have Fa. When it's in water, 
we have mg, we have the buoyant force, fb, and the uh, scale reading in water, fw. So from this free body diagram when it's in water, we know that fb plus fw must equal mg at equilibrium. And since fa equals mg, we could say that fb plus fw must equal fa. But if you recall then, using Archimedes' principle, fb must equal density of our fluid, volume displaced, times the acceleration due to gravity, rho vg. So fa minus fw must equal rho vg. Now, what's that density? Let's think about it. Density of our object is the mass of our object divided by the volume of our object. So the volume of our object must be equal to the mass of our object divided by the density of the object, if I rearrange that. So the mass over the density must be equal to the volume of the object. So I could write then that Fa minus Fw must equal the density of our fluid from there. Now our volume is going to be mass of our object divided by density of our object times g. Therefore, the density of our object with a little bit of algebraic manipulation must equal the density of our fluid times the mass of our object times g over fa minus fw. But the mass of our object times g, well again, mass of our object times g is just fa. So I could rewrite this then as the density of our object equals the density of our fluid, mass of object times g, well, that's fa, divided by fa minus fw, or density of our fluid times the ratio fa over fa minus fw. A lot of algebraic manipulation, but now we can find the density of an object using the weight in air compared to the weight in that fluid. Hopefully that gets you a good start on density and buoyancy. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.